Alrighty, yo, what is going on everybody? It's your boy Mr. DDG94 back with another reaction video. Today we're going to react to the most dangerous award show in music. I guess they meant to say the most dangerous award show in music history. I think we all know what that is, the 1995, yeah, the 1995 Source Awards. Let's see here. We had let's let's recapture all the events before we see them. So we had Death Row pull up, Snoop Dogg and uh, Suge pretty much ignited the crowd. Uh, the crowd, from what I heard, and this is the real truth about behind the scenes of what was really going on. What was going on was this show was actually private. It wasn't a public show, so it wasn't made public to the uh, all of New York. It was a private show, and the only people who were invited were like the entourages of certain uh, artists who were invited, and everybody was booing everybody because everybody was rolling with an entourage, so you had the Wu-Tang... You had uh, Death Row, you had Bad Boy, you had Outkast and they crew, you know what I'm saying? Everybody was rolling deep with their entourage, so everybody was booing everybody, you know what I'm saying? So So Death was in the building. Uh, it was everybody was just in a, it was it was everybody's entourage. And everybody was booing everybody. If it wasn't they entourage, like when Death Row went up there, you saw how Death Row was going crazy, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, when Biggie went up there, you saw how his crew was going crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's how it was. That's how it was. It, 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 it was the most... It. That's really why it was a lot of hostility and animosity in there because it wasn't like the public. It wasn't like New York doing that shit. It was people's entourages and posses and cliques and all that shit booing other artists. So if they artists didn't win, boo, boo. They was booing everybody, bro. If it wasn't they entourage, if it wasn't they clique, they wasn't fucking with it. That's the real story behind this. But yeah, it's a lot of crazy shit. I think DJ, I think DJ Quick uh, went up there when Death Row did they set. DJ Quick went up there on stage in front of MC8 face and dissed him, uh, rapping. Uh, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. Dog, they was going crazy at that uh, Source Awards that year. But yeah, anyway, so let's get right into it, man. This is a crazy ass award show. What I considered real hip hop died at the 1995 Source Awards. I was literally at its funeral. These words from Quest Love paint a pretty bleak picture of what happened in one of the most electrifying but dangerous nights in hip hop history. Tensions were high. Rivalries were fueled, and hip hop would never be the same again. Never. In the 90s, magazines were a lot more important. In the absence of social media, print media was a crucial channel of communication between artists and their fans. Mm. You had to pay for music with your hard earned cash, so the reviews would somewhat help you decide which records were worth looking into and buying. The source started off as a newsletter in 1988 by David Mays and Jonathan Schechter, two guys from Harvard. But despite their backgrounds, they were deeply passionate about hip-hop culture. And as hip-hop grew into its golden age during the 90s, the source became the hip-hop bible, as some called it. The magazine started its first award show in 1994, and the following year it was set to be televised. Little did they know that, for better or for worse, this would become one of the most important nights in hip-hop history. The event was held on August 3rd in Madison Square Garden's Paramount Theater. Everyone who was anyone in 90s hip-hop was all under the same roof. Biggie and Diddy were there, as were Snoop and Dre, so was Lil' Kim, Nas, Wu-Tang, the list goes on. Basically everyone was there, Yeah. but with one notable exception, Tupac Shakur. He was 300 miles north at Clinton Correctional Facility and serving a prison sentence. 
but his presence was still felt that night. A day before Tupac was arrested in 1994, he was shot five times at Rob. Shakur alleged that the people responsible were connected to Biggie Smalls and other people at his label, Bad Boy Records. Tupac's West Coast label, Death Row Records, was now at war with East Coast Bad Boy Records, and the classic East Coast-West Coast feud was in full swing. Hip-hop had always been a competitive art form, but things were now getting violent, and nobody knew how things were going to pan out. The Source Awards meant that all of the individuals in this feud were in the same building. Tension was definitely in the air. The night's opening turned out exactly as planned. Biggie Smalls won Best New Artist in his hometown, shouting, Yo! Brooklyn! So, I hope y'all can hear that. There's a lot of booze going on. You know what I'm saying? There's more booze going on than anything. Even though he shouted out Brooklyn and he shouted out New York and all that shit, they were still booing him because, like I said, it was entourages there. It was a private show. It was not open to the public. It was only open to the artists and their entourages. So Biggie was getting booed. Everybody was getting booed. If you wasn't part, if you if you wasn't part of Bad Boy, more than if anybody who wasn't associated with Bad Boy, more than likely was booing Biggie at this point in time. Yeah. To an electrified audience, the first ripple of tension came with the new Artist of the Year group category. To a modern audience, it seems obvious who should win this award. While the hype was focused on rappers from the East Coast or the West Coast, the source decided to shine spotlight on neither of them. Instead, the award went to a little-known rap group from Atlanta at the time called Outkast. As if motherfucking should, cause goddammit the South got something to say, goddammit. Shout out to Andre 3000. Shout out to Big Boy, man. That was the greatest motherfucking out. Man, come on, man. All the players play for far wide. Come on, man. Big Boy was humbled and highly complimentary to the New York audience. But Andre 3000 had something he wanted to get off his chest. In his unapologetically southern accent, he took the mic and said, I'm tired of folks, you know what I'm saying? The closed-minded folks, you know what I'm saying? It's like we got a demo table, don't nobody want to hear it, but it's like this, the South got something to say, to say about that. Say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk your shit. From the whole East Coast, West Coast feud. But only for a moment. The drama was set to escalate further on into... And little did we all know, boy, when Andre said that shit, Little did we know, going into the 2000s, hip-hop was about to change for a long-ass time. It still ain't it still ain't even close. It's the South still running shit. That's crazy, bro. The South been running shit longer than the East Coast and the West Coast combined. That's crazy, bro. Y'all really let these down South niggas take over like that? Y'all ain't got... Man, that's sad, bro. Damn, East Coast, damn, West Coast. Y'all going outside like that? Shit, even the wet, even the Midwest getting more shine now. That's because that drill shit, though. But anyway, so let's get right back into it. To the night. A huge win for Bad Boy Records was Lyricist of the Year, which also went to Biggie. And again, the New York audience was excited to see him win another accolade. Dr. Dre would be the first person from Death Row to step up onto stage. It was for Video of the Year for the song Natural Born Killers. He also paid tribute to his fellow NWA member Easy e who had passed away from AIDS-induced pneumonia earlier that year. It was a dignified acceptance speech without any drama, something which would be replicated by upcoming winners. It's the hour mark that things really start to heat up. Flavor Flav announces that the winner of Soundtrack of the Year for a motion picture would go to Above the Rim. As it should. By Death as it should, we've already reviewed it, and I think it's safe to say... Ain't nothing, ain't, ain't no soundtrack I can honestly think of can fuck with that soundtrack. I think that is hands down the greatest hood movie soundtrack of all time. Records. Come on. He thanks God. He thanks everyone death row. He sends out a special message of love out to Tupac in prison. 
But then he uses his time on stage to take some shots. Any artists out there want to be, be artists? I want to say sorry. Don't worry about the records. Do what you want to be. All in the videos. All on the records. Listen. Come death row, nigga. The audience. Things that turned sour. Up next was the award for producer of the year. Presenting this award was film director John Singleton, best known for directing Boys in the Hood in 1991. He sensed a lot of tension in the air and he made some lighthearted jokes about the Knicks to calm things down. But eventually he addressed the elephant in the room. Well, we got to say something, all right? You know, we got to kill this East Coast, West Coast, South, Midwest, the city of rap, because, you know, there's a lot of devils out there that would be damned if they could ban it. And we wouldn't be having no show and not. A lot of y'all wouldn't be making no money. Singleton's argument was simple. You guys are making a lot of money doing what you love. Why would you do anything to ruin it? There was also a lot of moral panic about hip-hop in America at the time. So violent beefs were only giving hip-hop critics more credibility. It didn't work, though. Words seemed to have fallen on it didn't, it didn't work, though. And shit, going into today, it's worse now. Because the rapper's getting shot more than ever now. That's the fucked up part. It ain't working no more, bruh. It didn't work then, it ain't gonna work now, bruh. The rapper's getting shot more now than back then. Back then, that was just some bullshit. That was, that was just, that was just clicks. That was just clicks and entourages. Now, with social media and Twitter and all this shit, it done expanded upon that. Now, it could go from you just going to a city to do a show and you got to, and then the next thing you know, you getting your fucking brains blown out of the goddamn Chick-fil-A uh, drive through The fuck? You just go to get some Chick-fil-A and you get your, and you get shot. That's some fucked up shit, bro. That's, that, that, it's, it's worse now than what it was back then. It's, it's the truth, though. It's the truth, though. Like, yeah, back in the 90s, hip-hop was at a very bad point in time. But it didn't suffice. Like, it should have. Because, let's be real. Once Pac and Biggie died, shit just calmed down. And then all this popcorn rap started coming out. He listed out the nominees for producer of the year. Two of New York's greatest ever hip-hop producers, DJ Premier and Pete Rock, were on the list, and their names alone brought out cheers from the local audience. Singleton reads out the winner and says, The winner is... Uh-oh, we're gonna have some trouble here. The D-R-E. As it should. A huge eruption of noise. It was a moment that Questlove, who had absolutely nothing to do with this feud, left the building. Dre walks up on the stage and realizes that's legends. Could you be devoted fans of hip hop yet have no respect for the work of Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and the West Coast? Dre takes the Not at all. Snoop and then things calm down. It's always going to be love for Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. We're trying to make music for everybody to enjoy, you know what I'm saying? The next award kind of proved Snoop's point. A Lifetime Achievement Award was given to the recently deceased Eazy E. And a short video was produced explaining how Easy E was the founder of Gangsta Rap alongside his other NWA members, including the person they just booed, Dr. Dre. You could argue that Biggie would not be the huge success he was at that night without NWA laying the groundwork for Gangsta Rap. Easy E's former group Bone Thugs and Harmony then performed a song in his honor. But just after, someone else was asked upon the stage. Presenting the next award was Sean Diddy Combs, the very person Suge Knight had just mocked in front of Madison Square Garden. Diddy had three options here. He could add fuel to the fire and diss Suge back. He could say absolutely nothing at all. Or he could address the issues but also be the bigger person. Thankfully, he chose a third. Diddy said, I'm the executive producer that a comment was made about a little bit earlier. But con check this out, contrary to what other people may feel, I would like to say that I'm very proud of Dr. Dre, of Death Row, and Shook Knight for their accomplishments. You know what I'm saying? I'm a positive black man, and I make music to bring us together, not to separate us 
and all this east and west that need to stop. He also said one love and sent out an olive branch. He then told the crowd to we'll give it up to everybody from the east and the west that won the night. The next award was for best solo artist, and this award was given to Snoop Dogg. Snoop had to walk up on stage once again, but his words were more measured now. He hugs Diddy and gets on the mic. Oh, we doing it like players now. That's right. Now that we done made the East Coast, West Coast thing, officially one love, I want to thank everybody out here. Snoop had accepted the olive branch. The next award winners were also keen to calm things down. Despite having nothing to do with the feud, from the East Coast, RZA from the Wu-Tang Clan sent a message of peace, as did Craig Mack, who also hailed from the East Coast. Album of the year went to Notorious B.I.G. The whole audience was bated breath waiting to see what was going to happen. Was Biggie going to heat things up or cool things down? To the relief of many people in the building that night, he just gave a standard awards acceptance speech. He paid tribute to his family members and said, We did it, Brooklyn, we did it! It was later revealed that Diddy was the one that had told Biggie not to say anything inflammatory. Like many award shows, there was an after party. Things moved on to the Tunnel nightclub close by. This bar was Diddy's stomping ground, and he was ordering buckets of champagne. But standing across from the other side of the room was Suge Knight. Diddy confronted Suge and asked him if he was referring to him during his speech. Suge's response was, Nah, I was talking about Jermaine Dupree. Again, Diddy was faced with a number of options, but again, he chose the most sensible one. He put his ego aside and let Suge think that he believed him. In reality, he didn't. This after party was revealed by Diddy in the Drink Champs podcast. He was then asked if his move would have altered hip hop history. His response was that things would have been much, much worse if he decided to escalate. Questlove's damning words about the event would ring true much later on. Two of hip-hop's greats, Tupac and Biggie, would be dead within the next two years, both of them in their mid-20s. The Source Awards 1995 was an event that heightened these tensions, and the very thing everyone warned about came true. Something in hip-hop died that night, something that would never make it the same again. Well, there you have it, man. That is arguably, hands down, the greatest night in hip-hop history. I don't care what you say. That is the greatest night in hip-hop history. Fuck what they talk about. That was amazing, bro. I loved it. I loved the drama. I loved everything about it. He didn't talk about the DJ Quick part, though. He didn't talk about the DJ Quick part, and he also didn't bring up the fact that it was entourages and clicks in there that entire night. He didn't bring that part up, but see, I brought it up for y'all, gave y'all a little bit more context in, into what was going on. Because if y'all think like, who your source? Who who your source? Who who's who who told you this? Who told you this? Well, there's a lot of interviews on on this website called YouTube. That you're currently on right now. And there's a lot of people that was in the building that night. There's producers. There's people that worked for the source. That will confirm that 90% of the audience was entourages of certain rap. Of certain rappers. So there goes your evidence right there. So you can look it up on YouTube. There's plenty of them out there, bro. But yes, the 1995 Source Awards is hands down the most legendary and most iconic moment in rap history. But yeah, that's just going to about do it for this one. I'll see you on the next video. Tell me what y'all think down in the comment section below. I'll get back to you today. Peace out.